Good morning. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. Oh, come, let us worship. Join me in the colic for the day and let us pray. Stir up, O oh Lord, the wills of your faithful people that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And join me in the colic for Labor Day, and let us pray. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives one with another, that all we do affects, for good or ill, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers, and arouse our concern for those who are out of work, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, you are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each house household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assigned assembly assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, shall eat it roasted over fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is, how, this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals in your feet, and your staff in your hands. You shall not eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the field, the land of Egypt that night, and, I'll sh and I shall strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the goods of Egypt I will execute the judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you of the houses on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you, sh you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This morning's psalm is 149. 
Hallelujah, sing to the Lord a new song, sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let, Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice and triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Amen. A reading from the letter of the Roman to the Romans. Owe no one anything except, in love for one, except to love one another, for the one who loves another is, has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in, the wor in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is, a, is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how how it is now the moment for you to, to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we, now when we become believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put out the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in re reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, and said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Join me in the responsory. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be in my mouth. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. Look upon him and be radiant, and let your faces not be ashamed. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To the brokenhearted, the Lord is near. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, and truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of Christ. 
I'm recording this out of uh, sequence this morning, so uh, I can say good morning. Um, saw this thing the other day on the, the internet. Um, it had to be true. Um, someone someone had written in in response to a post about Labor Day, saying, "Leo, what's all the excitement about uh, people who farm or fish or?" or the people who work in factories and make things. Um, don't people just go to Walmart when they need to buy things? It must be true. Well, Labor Day is often regarded as the last chance for a long summer weekend at the beach or time spent with friends, uh, making it one of uh, what we would call the low Sundays of the church year. It also um, offers an opportunity to reflect uh, spiritually for a few minutes on the deeper significance of labor itself. Labor Day was first celebrated in 1882 and often in partnership with Christian leaders went on to become uh, the source of many of the benefits and rights that both blue and white collar employees enjoy today. Uh, vacations, holidays, workers' compensation days off, health insurance, disability, collective bargaining. St. James considers it a bitter irony that some early Christians favored the rich and discriminated against the poor. They offered the rich the best seats in church, then patronized the poor and the poorly dressed by seating them where they would not offend anyone. The second chapter of his epistle, he writes, You've insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Whereas people often think of their wealth as a sign of God's blessing, James compares their wealth to a toxic chemical that has corroded their character. Now, how do we reconcile what James says with uh, today's... Um, so-called prosperity gospel that basically says that if we are not blessed with riches from God, they were not working or praying hard enough. Now, Studs Terkel, uh, one of the best names ever, in his 1970 book entitled Working, describes the search of all people who work for a level of meaning in their employment that transcends the actual monetary compensation that they may receive for it. A search, as he puts it, for daily meaning as well as daily bread, for recognition as well as cash. Trickle then goes on to describe the failure of most people to find that meaning in or from their daily work. Labor Day reflects the biblical concern for justice for the hardworking, poor, and vulnerable. The prophetic writings in the gospel message consistently affirm the rights of laborers and the dispossessed in relationship to wealthy landowners and greedy business people. Economics matters in the biblical tradition. What people eat and where they live is a spiritual as well as an economic and a political issue. Now, with the growing disparity between the wealthy and the middle class, not to mention the poor in our world, Labor Day is an opportunity for the church to give thanks and recognize the importance of those who stand up for workers, as well as embrace the larger implications of this holiday. This is not merely a matter of class struggle, but the recognition of God's shalom, God's peace, who is property or wealth, are ultimately a matter of spiritual stewardship rather than private ownership. Labor Day offers us a reminder and challenge to affirm the value of work and to make a commitment to seek justice for all workers and balance the need for profit making with care for our society's most vulnerable members. A chance to send people forth today with the confidence that what they do during the week matters to God and to the world around us. 
We find a profound theological justification for this in the Reformation doctrine of vocation, as it's called, that dares to assert that all labor done in faith is pleasing to God, as pleasing, in fact, as spiritual or, or religious work. Both of those titles and quotes. There is, therefore, a holiness to the ordinary, even mundane labor that has the potential to confer the kind of recognition and meaning that average persons are working for in their lives. I used to go to retreats in a place called Monastery, at a monastery, who knew? And the priests and the, uh, the brothers there believed that even washing the dishes, or scrubbing the floor, or peeling the vegetables, or mucking out the animal pens, this was labor that was pleasing to God. Now, this doctrine of vocation teaches that all Christians are called by God to live faithfully in three areas, the household, the church, and the state, in which all Christians are to live out their priesthood of all believers by offering up their lives as living sacrifices to God. And what the doctrine also teaches us, that God himself is active in everyday human labor, family responsibilities, and social interactions. For instance, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. God does so, perhaps not as directly as when he gave manna to the Israelites, but through the work of farmers and bakers. We might add truck drivers, retailers. In effect, the whole economic system can be seen as the means by which God gives us our daily bread. Each part of that economic food chain is a vocation to which God works to distribute his gifts. Similarly, God heals the sick. Well, God can and sometimes does do so directly. In the normal course of things, God works through doctors, nurses, and other medical experts. God protects us from evil through the vocations of law enforcement. God teaches through teachers, orders society through governments, proclaims the gospel through pastors. God has ordained that human beings be bound together in love, in relationships, and communities existing in a state of interdependence. In this context, God is providentially at work caring for his people each of whom contributes according to his or her talents, gifts, or opportunities. This is sometimes called the masks of God. We also have what's known as the Protestant work ethic, it's also called the Calvinist work ethic or the Puritan work ethic. It's a concept in theology, sociology, economics, and history which emphasizes that hard work, discipline, and frugality are a result of a person's holding to the values espoused by the Protestant faith, and in particular that branch known as Calvinism. The phrase was coined in around the turn of the century, uh, the, uh, the turn of the 20th century, by Max Weber, who asserted that the Protestant ethics and values, along with the Calvinist doctrine of asceticism and predestination, gave rise to what we call capitalism. It's one of the most influential and cited books in sociology, not without its detractors, but just as priests and caring professionals are deemed to have a vocation or, or a, a calling from God for their work, according to the Protestant work ethic, the lowly workman also has a noble vocation, which he or she can fulfill through dedication to their work. Although entirely valid and worthwhile pursuits, a Christian does not need, all Christians do not need, to move to the mission field or to pursue a pastoral ministry or to engage in full-time evangelism in order to serve God. Nor do we need to retreat into spiritual isolation in order to experience God through solitary mystical contemplation. 
The Christian life is to be lived in vocation, in the seemingly ordinary walks of life that take up nearly all the hours of our day. The Christian life is to be lived out in our family, our work, our community, in our church. Such things might seem mundane, but actually God is present in all of them and in all of us. Never forget the value of our ordinary calling. As one commentator puts it, such work when conducted in faith, in joy of heart, in obedience and gratitude to God, is pleasing to the Lord. <coughs> in a summary of Martin Luther's uh, teaching, I'll, I'll close with this on this, on this uh, Labor Day weekend. As we, com as we contemplate Luther's famous saying, salvation by faith alone, set aside, this is in St. James, a similarly uh, forceful assertion, faith without works is dead. God does not need our works, but our neighbor does. Amen.
great and holy God, accept our offering of labor and love. May we bring you true and spiritual worship and be one with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We join in our affirmation of faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Welcoming God, thank you for loving us, being with us, and filling us with the Holy Spirit. We lift our petitions and our prayers to you, saying, Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. God of wisdom, give to the world's leaders your insight, your wisdom, and your determination to choose the paths that will improve the lives and welfare of their people. Fill them with compassion to face their challenges determined to see and to do what is right. We pray to you saying, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. God of peace, even where there seems to be no answers to unfairness, neglect, selfishness, injustice, bullying, abuse, violence, and hatred. We pray that you help us to find ways to resolve our differences other than with violence. Speak to the hearts of those in charge of the destiny of others, that all peoples and all nations might work together for security, justice, and peace. Help us all to be your instruments of peace and stand with those who cannot stand on their own. We pray to you saying, hear our prayers. God of love, you call us to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. They, there are so many ways in which we are all alike. We are definitely stronger and better for the diversity that exists among us. Let us look for them and be grateful. We pray to you saying, hear our prayers. God of ministry, bless Reverend Robert, Reverend Ed, Reverend Bert, and all who minister in your name. Help all who work on your behalf to give and receive the gifts of understanding and joy in your love. We pray for the four candidates for diocese and bishop and for the synod delegates who will vote shortly. We pray to you saying, hear yeah. our prayers. God of healing, watch over all whose lives have been affected by addictions, by mental illness, burdened by guilt, or lost in body or spirit. Give them strength to face each day with your help. Guide the medical professionals to find treatments and cures for the diseases and especially for COVID-19 virus. In our community, we ask for your healing embrace for Alma, for Joe, for Heather, for Donnie, for Doug, for Keith, for Lisa, for Sterling, for Pat, for Jean, for Fred and Gloria Jean, for Jerry and Paul, and for those you add, you add, aloud, or in your own prayers. Bill, James. Mona, Ruth, Charlie, John. Help them find hope through their faith, through caring hands, and with the help of skilled medical teams. We pray to you saying, hear our prayers. God of compassion, 
Be with our brothers and sisters who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Help us to stay close to you and to one another. May those who have passed from this life rest at your side and share in the light and glory of your eternal peace. We pray to you saying, hear Amen. our prayers. God of life, we pray for the wonder of your creations on earth. Lord, help us to care for and nurture the life you have created and placed on this earth with us. We pray to you saying, hear Amen. our prayer. God of community, we pray that you be with our neighbors and family and friends. Bless and protect them. Help us appreciate the gifts they bring into our lives. We pray to you saying, hear Amen. our prayer. Lord, thank you for always loving us. Despite our faults and failings, fill us with the Holy Spirit to help and love each other as you have loved us. We pray to you saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. <laughs> Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Announcements for today. It's also the first weekend of the month. It's also Labor Day weekend. Hope everybody's enjoying themselves and being safe. And so we are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, so we're sending you best wishes. And Rosalita celebrated a birthday yesterday, and someone with the initials of the Reverend Robert Richmond also has a birthday coming up this month. I'm happy to say that. He is hmm, three weeks younger than me. Tom is collecting donations for the Terry Fox virtual run, and the food bank still needs you. Summer gift jars or envelopes may be dropped off here at the end of the month. And the Time Talent Treasure fundraiser is on the go, and Mike has already washed one vehicle. He's waiting to do more, so you can contact him. The Time Talent Treasure fundraiser is on the go. Oh, yeah, I already did that. Pardon me, ahead of myself here now. Uh, Sandra's making pickles and is still in need of mason jars, so if you have any you wish to donate, you may contact Sandra. And I will be sending out a list of baked goods on a weekly basis, and if you wish to place an order, I will happily fill your order and deliver them on Saturdays throughout this month and October. For all of this, you can leave a message on our office voicemail, or you can contact Mike about the car washing, Sandra about the pickles. I think she's also making other things as well, but I know pickles for sure. And you can also contact me. And I also understand that September the 9th is Buy Your Priest a Beer Day. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just heard that a few minutes ago. I won't say where I got the information. But his initials are. And the initials are. R, R, R. And the first of the month, we forgot to sing the, the wishes, so where's Martha and Suzanne? May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Back to you, Reverend Robert. Well, thank you, Edie. And uh, did I mention September 9th? Um, I thought you go to lunch that day. I've got my book 
Okay. <laughs> it's a it's a fun razor. Okay. Um, we're having our first Paris Council meeting of, of, of the fall in a, a week or so. And um, as, as uh, most of you know, or most of you can guess, the major item on the agenda is going to be where do we go from here with church services? Um, if, if you've got an opinion, which I'm sure you do, um, and you'd like to share that with uh, either Martha, Edie, myself, or I'll leave a message at the office, um, your feelings. I know some people, for example, who don't have, I would, I would guess, a lot of um, technical wizardry at their fingertips uh, are, are, are not really finding any benefit at all in the, in these um, you know recorded services and are, are yearning for the uh, the time when they can be back together with their friends. Um, I'm I'm kind of like that. <laughs> I miss you people desperately. And I miss celebrating. I mean, I mean, celebrating in the, you know, in the liturgical sense and in, and in the ordinary sense of the word, celebrating together. So if if you have a thought, uh, we'd like to hear it and uh, add it to our deliberations. Uh, the school starts this week. Yes, okay. uh, it starts Tuesday. Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like. We don't know how that's going to affect, uh, you know, um, statistics. Uh, but uh, I don't care really about statistics. I, I care about the kids and the teachers and uh, the parents and how this, uh, you know, this this could really add to the situation and uh, force all, all kinds of reconsideration. Like uh, maybe we'll have to burst the bubble for a while. I don't know. But um, we should have a bit of an idea by next week. But looking looking at what we see in other places that have already opened, uh, um, you know, schools and whatnot, and you know, one school, big school um, down south, has uh, something in the in the area of 750 cases in two weeks. <sighs> you know, like it. Uh, so um, we really need to be careful about what we do. Uh, I mean, I know we'd all like to get back together, um, but at the at, at the same time, we're not getting back together. Not because we don't like you, but because we do like you, and uh, you know we don't want to uh, add add to the possibility of anybody anybody coming down with this. So if if you've got thoughts. Or suggestions. Uh, we're going to, in the fall, uh, we're going to be able to change the format. I, th I think we have all, all, all the tech, uh, the technology accumulated now that we can uh, we can start streaming, streaming or you know, at least recording a full service. Uh, if we if we if we do get back to uh, in person attendance. With the uh, current rules, we can we could get maybe 20 people in the church, given the uh, the social distancing and whatnot. And uh, you know, to be honest, some Sundays that would be an improvement. But anyway, we, you know, we just got to think these these things out, pray about them. You know. Uh, this is a situation none of us have ever been in before. Uh, you know, please God, we're never in it again. But we have to be very careful here. Um, so any, anything you can do to help us with that would be seriously very, very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Almighty God, may your holy love strengthen us in love 
and help us to serve you in one another. Together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bye.